So we've reviewed a few home theater receivers on this channel, and one of your criticisms about our home theater receiver reviews has been, why on earth are we talking about home theater receivers that are two, three, four years old now when, when Denon and Morantz have brand new 8K capable receivers hitting the market any day now? Well, any day is today, and we have one of Denon's new 8K receivers, and I'm here to tell you, there was a reason why we were talking about older tech rather than the new stuff. So strap in, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, because today we are having an honest discussion about Denon's new 8K receivers. Denon and Marantz's new 8K capable receivers are probably one of the worst kept secrets in all of home theater. We've known about them for months. We were under embargo, but yes, we've known about them for months. But we've also, for months, been making moves behind the scenes to adopt an 8K workflow, not to mention be early adopters of 8K tech in this house. And so we reached out to Denon and Marantz's parent company, Sound United, months ago, letting them know that we were jumping aboard 8K early and that we were likely going to be one of the few people in our relative space that could actually test their 8K claims. Now, we had asked Denon for one of their higher end models, at which time Denon let us know that none were available for review. And as of this recording, they still have not been made available. But Denon did counter with their entry level S960H that we're reviewing here today. And we thought that that would be a great fit because another thing that you guys always write to us about is looking for affordable home theater solutions. So if you're in the market for a home theater receiver in 2020, it stands to reason that you may consider the S960H, hoping that it is the receiver of the future and maybe even keeps you a little bit future proof for years to come. We can't talk about how the Denon sounds without first addressing 8K, because on paper, across all of Denon's receivers, 8K seems to be the only or biggest difference between last year's model and this year's. So let's, let's have a conversation about 8K. Denon is claiming that all incoming video signals, be it SD, HD, or 4K, can be output up to 8K60, upscaled and output up to 8K60. And we are able to confirm that it will at least hit 8K30. But we can confirm that the Denon does output all the way up to 8K30. But no matter how much money you spend on a Denon receiver in 2020, you're only getting one HDMI input that can accept an 8K signal. And since there are no 8K sources on the market right now to test this, it becomes a little bit difficult to see just what kind of 8K signal the Denon will accept. Now I put together a bit of a Frankenstein rig using our computers here in house and that, you know, playing back some 8K footage that we do have. And the results were not great, but I'm not faulting the Denon here because the, the hiccups, the stutters and whatnot in playback could have easily been caused by the, like I said, Frankenstein rig that I sort of had to assemble. So we're just gonna reserve judgment and hopefully get to revisit this topic a little bit later in the year when 8K sources may become available. Now let's talk about some of the not so positives because if you're not able to put an 8K signal to this receiver, what you're doing is you're upscaling lesser signals all the way up to 8K. Now it should be noted that if you own an 8K display, your TV is automatically going to do this with any signal you feed it. So you have to now ask yourself, do you want your receiver to upscale or do you want your TV to do it? Because you can simply connect all of your sources to the receiver and have that signal pass through onto the television. The only time you may want your receiver to do the upscaling for you is if it does a better job than your display. In our testing, and unfortunately this is this is difficult to show you on YouTube because of all of the added compression. So you're gonna have to kind of take my word for it, but in our testing when fed the exact same signal, the same 4K signal, the LG simply did a better job of upscaling 4K to 8K 
than the Denon did. In direct comparison, a 4K signal going into the Denon output in 8K30 to our LG looked softer, skin tones were waxier, banding was far more apparent, and motion simply wasn't as smooth. So with 8K out of the way, we have to talk about how does this receiver sound? And this portion of the review is likely gonna be a little bit different, if not a little bit short, and you're gonna understand in just a moment, because on a whole, I really didn't like this receiver. And I, I don't know what it is because I have been a fan of Denon in the past. I've been a Denon customer at various times throughout my career. And I know that there are a lot of you who likely have Denon products in your home theaters right now, and you're very happy with them. And so I definitely don't want you to look at something that you're happy with and second guess it. I'm just saying that for 2020, this new product, I really did not enjoy my time with it. But let's let's break it down, starting with the base. The base is good, it's, it's deep, it has depth, like it'll play down low. What it lacks is detail and resolution and texture and nuance. It's very rumbly, but it has no real impact. Or it's weighty, but it doesn't have any moves. You know, it can't pivot from one point to another. It's just sort of around and it very much rolls around and that's the kind of speed with which it reacts. So it sounds a lot like bass maybe coming from your neighbor's house rather than bass that exists in your living room. And the mid-range is kind of the same story here. It is on the warmer side of neutral, but it lacks a bit of roundness. It lacks texture. It lacks focus. Um, I'm not going to call it natural sounding. And even when given a center channel with which to play mid-range dialogue through, it's not very intelligible, um, honestly. If anything, it's, it's kind of grainy at times, especially at volumes. It, it's, it's not very pleasing. Now, in terms of the high frequencies, there are high frequencies here. They are a lot more detailed than the bass and the mid-range, but that also makes them a little bit more on the aggressive side and sharp, and they do lack some air and decay. They're very digital sounding, and I mean that how it sounds. So a lot of you who are like, oh, I hate the sound of digital things, like you're probably reacting to experiences similar to this because it's as if you're listening to a computer or a robot approximate what a high frequency is supposed to sound like rather than what a high frequency actually sounds like in real life. And so it, 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 while there is more detail, it's just not kind of detail that you necessarily want or that can be enjoyed for long periods of time. Now, in terms of soundstage, obviously, I think you know where this is going because it is. It's, it's sort of like Denon or the receiver itself is just kind of throwing sound around your room. There's not a lot of accuracy here, whether it be surround sound or stereo. The soundstage is just, it's, it's painted in broad strokes. That's, that's the best way to describe it. There's not pinpoint imaging, there's broad imaging. So if you are looking for a wall of sound or a party or house type sound, then maybe this is something to consider. But I just, I don't think a lot of you watching this are, are going to be satisfied with that kind of a presentation. And the same is kind of true for dynamics. It's, it's very much an all or nothing proposition. At lower volumes, this particular receiver is vague and there's not a lot of detail. But then if you turn it up expecting to gain some of that, really all you're gaining is volume. It's kind of like taking the end off a of fire hose. It's everything's nice and contained one minute and then the next minute it's just all up in your face. And so a lot of drama happens in the silence. And when this receiver is quiet, it's very uninvolving. It's just not engaging. So when you turn it up, yes, it becomes more engaging, but it becomes engaging in that forceful way, that way that's like, well, I, I can't stop it from being in my face. And so on a whole, sonically, the receiver comes off as being rather confused. 
So yes, it has the requisite power to drive a number of loudspeakers. Lord knows we paired a ton of loudspeakers to this receiver in order to try and figure out what it wanted, what it what was going to work with it. So it, it, it has the power, you know, to do that. It just doesn't really know what to do with it. It doesn't have, it lacks clarity. It lacks focus. It, it lacks definition and a purpose is the best way to describe it. It lacks a purpose. Like it, it is a home theater receiver that doesn't deliver a theater experience. And I don't even have to go into its two-channel performance because obviously if you're looking at a home theater receiver, you're likely going to enjoy it for surround sound. But if you are hoping for something that is dual purpose, like home theater and stereo, it actually gets worse in stereo. It can be bested by almost anything, including the speakers built into our television. And now that we've talked about sound, there are just a few more things that I need to make you aware of. And the first one is heat. This particular Denon receiver gets hot, extremely hot, hotter than most two channel stereo amplifiers that we have in this house. And I have no idea why that is, because it's not like this thing is a barn burner in terms of power output, and yet it puts out heat like it's a damn class A amplifier. So if you are considering purchasing this particular unit, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you place it in an incredibly well-ventilated area, but an area that is also safe from, say, children's fingers or your pet's noses, as there is a potential that it could burn. Now, with respect to the menus, they are clear. They allow you to set the Denon up to its fullest potential. I have no issue with the menus there. What I have issue with is for a receiver that touts its 8K video capability, you half expect the menus to be one of the ways with which they sort of flex on their 8K capability. And yet these menus seem straight up borrowed from receivers that are five and six years old. I don't know why that is. I don't know why that is. And I do consider it a bit of a missed opportunity here. Because like I said, with no 8K source material readily available, put some in your, in your device in order to give people a taste of what's to come. Make them excited for what they bought. But no, we get these sort of like dot matrix looking menus and they're just a real letdown here. Another drawback with this particular unit has to do with its HDMI switching. Now, one of the big benefits of having an AV receiver is your ability to connect multiple sources to it via HDMI and then switch seamlessly between them. The switching on this particular unit was anything but seamless. If anything, it was incredibly buggy, resulting in system shutdowns almost every single time I went from one source to the next. For example, if I was watching TV and then suddenly decided I wanted to play PlayStation and I just hit game on the Denon remote, the entire system would shut down. Now, upon powering up, game would be selected and everything would function normally. But simply making that switch via the remote from one input to the next would often result in a shutdown. And like I said earlier in this particular review when we were talking about 8K, Denon is choosing to tout a lot of the video capability of this particular receiver, specifically its ability to do enhanced 4K, its support for HDR functionality, as well as some ISF capability. But honestly, its implementation here is just not as good as what I'm finding in other displays that we have in-house. And so it does raise that age old question once again, do you do all of this control in your receiver or do you leave it to the display? As it relates to the 960H, I would say leave it to the display, though your, your experience may differ as you go further up the Denon line. And those of you who may be into vinyl records, this particular receiver does have a built-in phono stage, but unfortunately it's just not very good. So I'm gonna move on. Now, in terms of comparable products, obviously we compared the Denon to our Sony 1080 receiver, as well as the Yamaha 3080, both of which you guys had a lot of comments about why would we talk about those receivers? And I, I gotta tell you, 
in 2020, if you're not making the leap to 8K, these are still both very viable options. And in our testing, outright bested the Denon here. And so we still stand by those reviews and would urge you to take a look at even those receivers over this particular Denon. And we're gonna to link to a bunch of different receivers down in the description below, which brings me to my final thought. And I'm gonna try and get this in before all the big storms roll in. You might hear some thunder in the background, but. This obviously is not a receiver that I cared for. In fact, I really did not enjoy my time with this particular product, nor did I enjoy this review. And I, I'm saying that because you need to know that I am not saying these things to sow doubt in Denon. If you are an existing Denon customer and you like what you have, you like your receiver, I, I'm not questioning that at all because I myself, have been a happy Denon customer throughout my home theater journey. They make great receivers. They just didn't make one here. And I don't know why that is, but if you are on the market right now for a home theater receiver, maybe one that has 8K capability, this is a receiver that you should stone cold skip because there's not enough difference here between last year's model and this one, apart from say 8K, which makes this feel more like a mid-season refresh than an all new product. So like I said, if you're on the market for an AV receiver, skip this one, maybe look elsewhere, or wait till 2020 where I'm sure Denon will have much more competitive options. So that's it, that's, that's my review. That is my review of the Denon. S960H. What did you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring the bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that we leave you in these videos, know that that is your way of supporting this channel, and we thank you very, very much. If you're looking for other ways to support the channel, consider becoming a member. Click join right next to subscribe. Read all about that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File, and I have got to get out of here. These storms are starting to get really bad. So it's not an omen, not an omen. Just going to stop recording. But remember, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.